Network Binder will automate a lot of these tasks for us because it'll parse the PCAP, it'll look at the high-level protocols, and it'll reassemble the objects that are in the protocols like pictures, web pages, sessions, cookies, usernames, passwords, things like that. And it'll display it to us in a graphical format. So it's tab-based as far as dividing up the content. The hosts are on the left. And then we have things like files and images, messages, and usernames and passwords under credentials. You'll have cookies under sessions and DNS under the DNS tab. And so for these particular objects that it supports, it is a great tool for being able to take a packet capture and quickly understand what it was that was happening, what event was occurring based on what's in the PCAP. If you open up the plus symbols for the host, it'll tell you about the fingerprints for that host. I believe it uses uh, POF for fingerprinting and it uses some other tools for doing fingerprinting as well. Um, another tool that can do these kind of fingerprints is Satori, so if you want to look at that one, and uh, it'll give you information like this. But Network Miner does a great job of doing the fingerprints and showing you who's talking to who and the information about each host, like its host name, its DNS name, MAC address, and that sort of information. So to get Network Miner, you download it off the NetRSec website. You can download the free edition. And that'll run on Windows and it runs in Linux in the Mono platform. So installing it on Windows can be a little bit of a trick. You drag and drop the folder into the program files directory. And that'll work fine on Windows 7. But in Windows 10, you'll get an error when you try to run the program without administrative privileges. It's not a good idea to run parsers, generally speaking, with administrative privileges if you don't have to. So instead of just running it as an administrator in Windows 10, go into the uh, security settings for that folder that you drug and dropped into the program files and add the modify and write privileges for regular users. And that will give the users the ability to run the program and then let the program create directories in that subdirectory and create files like temporary files and other files in that subdirectory. If you don't give it the right privileges, it can't do that. And uh, then it won't be able to create all those little temporary files and all those images and carve them all out. Mm -hmm. yep. In Linux, the directions that are on the website as of today have the first line here just a little bit different than what you need for um, Kali Linux. So for Debian based systems, you need this libmono system windows forms 4 and um, just to allow the mono software to display windows forms which is what Network Matter runs inside of. But otherwise, you just download the software from the, from the website, unzip it. Typically, you would install software like this into the opt directory, but you may put it in other directories if um, you're following the hierarchical file system structure and make the, ex the exe executable, and then you can run it with mono, which allows you to run some Windows programs inside of Linux. But just be uh, advised that the first line on the installation directions as of today are slightly off because they're referring to an older version of the Libmono Windows library. And on the latest version of Kali, that won't work. <clears throat> to open a file, it just click on File Open is one way to do it. That's probably the easiest way. Um, you can also start it and pass it in a file, but it's a lot easier just to click File Open. And the Host tab is going to be the first tab on your left, and that's going to show you all the network connections, the fingerprints, and the information about the host. It'll automatically try to carve out the different kinds of files. So these will be things like Word documents and 
other types of files. Emails would be another example of a file. The attachments of the emails themselves, um, it can also grab. So if you see here in the second line, there is the Word document that was an attachment for the email, and the email is right there above it in the same list if you open up the second PCAP, PCAP number two. It actually saves these files out to your hard drive under that directory, which is the reason we had to give it write privileges to be able to write these files. So if you right click on any of the lines and click open file, assuming you have a program on your computer that supports that file type like Microsoft Word for DocX's for example, then you can right click and open that file up right there from the network matter interface. If you go over to the images tab, you'll see that the images are displayed. So in this case, there was uh, a lot of traffic in this PCAP to iTunes. And when the user was looking at iTunes, they were seeing the thumbnails for the different movies and so forth that were in that stream. And you can see that the network miner is pulling those out. Now what network miner itself is displaying is thumbnails from its point of view. The actual picture might be bigger or have better resolution, so again, you can open these actual pictures up in a picture viewer and see if you can get a better resolution as far as trying to see what the, what the picture looks like. It'll also try to grab credentials. What it's looking for is HTTP cookies, it's FTP usernames and passwords, SMTP usernames and passwords. If you have a, a web application that passes credentials in clear text, it's going to try to do pattern matches on pull out those credentials. And this feature, because it is doing pattern matching, it's doing like regular expression matching, it, it is prone to false positives. So you do need to kind of look through the results when you get them back. But in this case, we can see that there was a HTTP cookie and there also was a SMTP username showing us the username of an email uh, address that someone that was sending emails. If you go over to the messages tab, this is going to find things like chats and email messages themselves. This is a great way to, to grab email messages out of the packet capture number two. So the good thing about it is, is that it does high-level analysis really quickly, but it doesn't support very many formats, relatively speaking. So it's going to get the heavy hitters, though, kind of like Wireshark does, where it has the built-in protocol parsers for the, for the big-time protocols like web and uh, file sharing. Network Miner actually has even a few more than that for the higher-level protocols.